Hello and welcome to this 360 degree virtual reality video tour around North Down and the Ards Peninsula in County Down. We're going to be tracing the legacy of Ulster Scots settlers in this area over the last four centuries, thinking about their history, their heritage and their lifestyle. Now the scene that you're looking at has been recorded in 360 degrees and that means that you can explore with me. You can use your mouse to move around the scene or a VR headset. And today we're in Newtonards in a beautiful old ruined building. And to see where Newtonards is in the map, have a look to my left. So we're standing in this fascinating medieval building known locally as the Old Priory. It's in Court Street in Newtonards and this was originally established in the 1200s by the Dominicans and those early monks could have travelled here by boat because we're not too far here from the waters of Strangford Loch. Now by the late 1500s, early 1600s, this was all part of the Gaelic territories of Clandyboy um, under the ownership of Con O'Neill. But in the early 1600s, his lands were divided by the king and two thirds of them went to two Scottish lairds. One was called Sir James Hamilton, the other Sir Hugh Montgomery. And if you look to my left and my right, you'll see portraits of those two Scottish lairds who are now here in Ulster as landlords. It was Sir Hugh Montgomery who acquired this area and it was called then Newtown or Newton. He decided to make this the centre of his new market town. So he got to work repairing the area, he made his first home here, and he put a protective bawn wall, B-A-W-N, all around this area. Later then, he gave this building over for the Protestant worship of his new Scottish tenants, adding a new roof and the north transept to this church. Now, if you look over my shoulder, there's a, an iron gate, and this guards the steps leading up that bell tower. So back in the day, a bell would have rung up there to call the local Ulster Scots settlers to worship. That original old bell was found in the 1950s, and today you can see it in St Mark's Parish Church at the other end of the tower. But you can see it in a photograph here on the right-hand side, and the other photograph shows some lovely medieval stained glass fragments, which were from this old priory. They date to around 1450, and they would have shone this beautiful coloured light on the head of the Ulster Scots worshippers. To the right of that little gate over there are the main doors into the abbey, these big wooden gates. On the other side of that then, where today we have Court Street, there would have been an inscription on a plaque above the door with the letters HLM, Hugh Lord Montgomery, along with his family crest and a Bible verse. Those have been very badly weathered away over the generations, but a reproduction can be seen here in the image on my left-hand side. Hugh Lord Montgomery, the first Viscount of the Ards, is buried somewhere here with his wife, somewhere under our feet, but we don't know the location of their burial place. However, some other Scottish people are buried here, the Marquesses of Londonderry. There's an old Celtic cross here marking one tomb, and that tomb that you see behind you, just against the east wall, that's the last resting place of the fourth Marquess of Londonderry. Their home, which isn't too far from here, is known as Mount Stuart. There's a beautiful image of it here on the right-hand side. Today, that building is owned and managed by the National Trust, and it's a very popular visitor destination. So let's try and imagine this place 400 years ago. The Ulster Scots worshippers would have, after service, stepped out the door into the bustling heart of Sir Hugh Montgomery's new town. It didn't take very long for them really to establish a thriving community. You would have heard their Scottish accents, they had their Scottish surnames, they practiced their Scottish religion, they had farming practices, they had folklore, they had customs and superstitions. You would have seen all of the life of the Scottish settlers all going on around this area. Sir Hugh Montgomery obtained a charter from the king which allowed him to have markets here and in fact we still have a market in Newtonards every Saturday right up to the present day. So have a little look round now, one last look round this venerable old building and then we'll travel together to another site in Newtonards to find out exactly where all that business took place.
A market was crucial to the prosperity of Sir Hugh Montgomery's new town. And this building behind me, the Market Cross, symbolises in stone what that was all about. Trade, a market economy, progress and civilisation. All business in the town had to take place within sight of the Market Cross and any deal struck within its shadow was considered binding. This stood in the heart of the town and by 1636 there were almost a hundred houses clustered around this area. This was the heart of the early new town, not where Conway Square is further up the street nowadays. This market cross with its eight sides is similar to the market cross in Edinburgh in Scotland. And if you look to my left, you can see a picture of what that looks like today. So now let's take a look at this unusual building. It's octagonal. It's built of locally quarried sandstone, a lovely warm feel to the colours of the red sandstone here. It's got the eight sides and each of those has got a carved panel. You can read 1636 here above the doorway. The panels depict the coats of arms of the Shaws, the Montgomerys, the Royal and the Irish coats of arms. There's a fleur-de-lis within a laurel wreath. There's a cross within a coronet. And then of course there are these beautiful little gargoyles. These were originally meant to drain the water off the roof. It's said that in 1660, wine flowed from their mouths to celebrate the restoration of King Charles II after the period of the Cromwellian Protectorate. Down inside then, through the little gate, in the late 1600s, a night watchman would have lived in here. He would have patrolled the streets at night and lit the lamps. Then in the 18th and 19th centuries, this was the office of the London Derry's land agent, the Stuart family of Mount Stuart, who we discussed earlier on. He would have taken the rents here. And then later on in the 1940s, this was actually a prison for the drunk and disorderly. Nowadays, it just stands in the middle of a busy road junction. Now take a look up at the top of it. You can see a weather vane up there with a dragon. The dragon comes from the coat of arms of the Stuart family. He's always shown standing. And you can also see the dragon on top of the town hall. To get a closer look at the Stuart family coat of arms, take a look to my right. The motto of the family reads, Metuenda Corolla Draconis, Fear the Crest of the Dragon. Nothing to do with Game of Thrones. So now take a little look behind you. Where you see the parlour bar with a plaque on the wall, this plaque records the fact that this house was built by John Bell in the year 1735. John Bell was quite possibly descended from those original Ulster Scott settlers who came over with Hugh Montgomery. So I hope you've enjoyed that little introduction to this very Ulster Scott side of Newton Ards. Maybe you'll be inspired to come and visit here yourself, or you might want to watch some further episodes now in our virtual tour series.